I had a couple landlines at home, and uh, like most of you, I just got call after call after call of telemarketers. Now, I love telephones. I work on telephone systems for a living, so I didn't want to get rid of my landlines, right? I want to protect my telephone at home. And one day, just out of desperation, I just handed the phone to my kid, and I said, here, son, waste this guy's time on the phone. <laughs> and my son, he, he hung up the phone immediately, and he said, Dad, he said a bad word. And I thought, well, that was just an air conditioning guy. Why was an air conditioning guy swearing at my 14-year-old kid, right? So I, I, I was just, I realized that these guys, they don't care. They get to do and say whatever they want. And I was just disgusted. I was so frustrated. And it feels like such an invasion of privacy to, to just receive these calls over and over, right? So I was done. I was done with telemarketing. I was done with it. Now, why is telemarketing such a problem today? Right? Because phones have been around for 140 years, so why now is this such a problem? Well, economics really is the reason why. Right? It's now possible to have 30 people sitting in a room anywhere in the world calling into the United States all day long. Okay? That wasn't possible 20 years ago. Now, thanks to voice over IP and the internet and all of that, and it's possible now to do that, technology and economics. Um, the other issue is, um, Caller ID manipulation, okay? We all think of caller ID manipulation as spoofing, which is true. Caller IDs can be manipulated by um, the telephone system offering the call, it needs to be able to set the caller ID. It's very necessary technology for the call forwarding and, and call, um, call find me, follow me features, and um, your doctor, when he calls and tells you of an automated doctor's appointment, that machine is calling on behalf of hundreds of other doctors, and so it needs to be able to put the right caller ID on the call when offered to you, okay? Why isn't anybody doing anything about this, okay? So telemarketing, why isn't anyone doing anything? Well, uh, I'm sorry to say that you probably would look to the phone companies to do something about telemarketing, right? But telephone companies can't help you, okay? Asking the phone company not to deliver telemarketing calls is like asking the post office not to deliver junk mail, okay? The, a cleverly constructed piece of junk mail looks like regular mail to the post office, right? They, they, have, they have to deliver it. The only way they would be able to tell if it's junk mail or not would be to open the envelope, okay? And the post office, of course, isn't going to open the envelope. Well, it's the same thing with phone companies. They don't want to open the envelope. That would mean answering the call for you before delivering it to you, right? They, and no telephone company wants to do that. So how about the government? So the government can enact laws like the Do Not Call List and the Telephone Consumer Protection Act, and they can take complaints, like the Federal Trade Commission takes complaints from everyone for, regarding telemarketing, and uh, they do an effective job at that, but they also will occasionally make these big, high-profile busts, like a few weeks ago they busted up the fake IRS in India calling into the USA, right? Um, and so they, they can do these big, giant operations, right? It takes a lot of resources to do it, and they can bust it up, and there's a lot of money involved in that one operation. But for every one of those, there are thousands of other companies that are trying to sell you uh, credit card reduction or trying to, you know, offering you a free cruise or things like that, right? So the government just can't keep up with all of these because these operations hide behind fake caller IDs, and they just can't be found, right? They can't easily be found anyway unless they're big, big players, okay? So the government can't help you, and the telephone companies can't help you. So what's this, gonna, what's this gonna look like in 10 or 20 years, right, when the network is already crushed by telemarketing? What do we do? What's gonna happen? How do we fix this telemarketing thing? What's it gonna take, all right? Um, so what it's going to take is a pirate, okay? Somebody thinking differently, something, somebody from the outside sort of doing, so deploying some, some new technology and some new tools, okay? So getting back to a telemarketer swearing at my son, um, when, I, when I was done with that call, I said, this is it, I gotta do something about this. And if I'm gonna stop telemarketing at my house, I'm a telephone guy, I work on phone systems, I should be able to fix this, okay? So I created a little app that when you call my house, first, a, a little greeting answers and says, hey, if you're a real person, punch a button and you'll ring through to my house. From after that, once you do it just one time, your caller ID is allowed every time. So just punch a button, you'll ring through. Um, and I put that in front, 
and, uh, and then people could call me, they could punch a button ring through. What I was surprised to find was that stopped 100% of telemarketing. All telemarketing stopped at my house by deploying that greeting. But I was looking in the logs, and I, and I noticed that the telemarketers, of course, were still calling, but they thought that that greeting was an answering machine, and so they would just hang up and move on, right? Because telemarketers all use, 100% of all telemarketers use these things called predictive dialers, which will dial tens, hundreds, thousands of numbers per hour trying to find real people. And they find real people by, you know, when you say hello, hello, they, that, that predictive dialer says that's a real person, a customer, an agent. If they hear just a lot of noise, like press one and you'll ring through to my house, they think that's an answering machine and they would just move on. So I'm looking in the logs and I noticed that these telemarketers would call several times a day. They might call four times in a row. They'll call in the evenings, weekends, weekdays, mornings, whatever. They would just call constantly. The same numbers would call at different times a day. And it reminded me, that's what this is, okay? It reminded me of the, the scene in Jurassic Park where Muldoon says that they're, they're attacking the defenses, they're, they're, they're attacking the defenses looking for vulnerabilities, right? So these telemarketers are, are, they're attacking my house at different times of day looking for vulnerabilities, right? They'll try spoofing my local area code for the caller ID, right? They'll block their caller ID, they'll, they'll put fake caller IDs in. So trying to get me to answer the phone. They're trying to get me to answer. And, and I said, well, that's great. My machine blocks their machine. But maybe I can get that machine to trip, just stumble a little bit when it gets to my house. Right? Before it moves on, let's try to get it to stumble a little bit. Okay? And I remember when I was a kid, there was an old cartoon about this plumber knocking on the door, and then a parrot inside has, says, who is it? And the plumber says, it's the plumber. I've come to fix the sink. Okay, this is 40 years ago, right? The brain is a weird thing, right? This stayed in my brain for 40 years and then resurfaced when I got these telemarketers knocking at my door and I said, well, maybe I could build a parrot that would do that kind of thing to a telemarketer, okay? So I recorded just a, a, a sound file of just hellos and let's see what happens, okay? Hello? 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 Hey, hi, how are you? There we go. So I said hello a couple times their predictive dialer cut me to an agent. Now I got an agent on the phone. And that's when it came to me. What's the most expensive part of a telemarketing operation? It's that human being that I just got on the phone. There's a lot of open source software and you don't even need a phone anymore, just a headset and a computer and that's your telemarketing shop, right? But that human being is their most expensive asset. And my machine just got that human being on the phone. So then I thought, well, wow, uh, let's see if I can keep that guy engaged. Let's see if I can keep these telemarketers engaged for a little bit, okay? So then I said just some, so I, you know, I built a little clever algorithm trying to turn to talk to a telemarketer, right? And I said, sometimes I said just inane things, right? You know, I was having trouble concentrating because you sound exactly like somebody I went to high school with. Um, so, sorry, say that part again. So, things like that, right? So, and of course I would record these calls, right? Because I'm tuning this algorithm constantly and I have to wait for telemarketers to call back, known telemarketers, because I don't want people I know to go into this thing, right? So telemarketers would, would get into this. So it was a long development process to developing this thing. But I started posting a few of these calls online and it turns out nobody likes telemarketing, right? And so, and the calls were funny. They're entertaining and they're funny. And so I then uh, created some new robots, right? And more voices. Hello. 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 All right. So I got more robots and more voices. And now I'm, I'm providing a method for everyone to use these robots for their own telemarketers, okay? So now, instead of engaging with a telemarketer yourself or yelling at them or hanging up the phone or ignoring them, now, these robots, these Jolly Roger telephone robots, can now engage with the telemarketers. And here's some real examples of what goes on here. Okay. Hello. Are you Richard? Yes. Hi. Yes. Are you Richard? Yes. Oh, I, I'll be honest, you're the first lady I've met with the name of Richard. <laughs> if, if you're trying to mess with me, this is pretty funny, actually, because most of the time I can tell when someone's messing with me. I'm pretty sure you're messing with me. Sure. Something tells me you are. Yes. Sir, are you busy? You're talking on another phone? Are mm -hmm. you playing a game, for God's sake? Uh-huh. Are you enjoying this? Now, what were you saying? 
I'm asking you to verify your address for the last four of your social, not just say yeah every time I ask. Sure. <laughs> yes? Yeah. Sir. Sir. Okay, let me finish the question before you say yes and yes and yes and yes. Okay. What is your opinion of Hillary Clinton? Right. Would you say that this conversation has gone nowhere? Mm, yes, yes. So, uh, who's this? Sorry, can, can you start over? Who's this? Why are you calling? I'm not telling you that. <laughs> I yes. have to get these questions done. Can yes. you please yes. not talk? Please sure. help me out and let me ask you the question. Yeah. Okay. What is your opinion of Hillary Clinton? Right. <sighs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Mike, this might be the, the, the weirdest conversation I've ever had with anybody. <laughs> yeah. I, mm -hmm. I feel like this conversation has gone nowhere. Mm, yes, yes. Uh, so, sorry, say that part again? Doubtful. Like I said, sir, are we actually being serious going on here? Are you trying to waste my time when I get paid to speak on the phone? I told you I have much time to waste it. But why are you sure. wasting your time? You don't have any work. You're a jerk. Oh, you know what, sir? I'm actually going to keep the money and I'm going to give it to somebody else because I don't like when people play around with my agents on the phone. You don't qualify for this with that kind of attitude. You have a... Oh. Sure. Okay, sir, you're, you're obviously messing with me. Sure. Um, I'm, I'm on track for this quarter to make uh, pretty close to 180000 for for this year. I'm getting paid. We can do this all day. Sure. Uh, so this is basically like taking a break for me. Hang up the call. Yes. Hang up the call. Yes. Very fool. Do you have your credit card with you? Yeah. Kindly read me the credit card number. Mm-hmm. You know what? You are okay. just here to waste my time. And uh, right now, the thing what you are doing right now, today I'm telling you the very truth. Sure. I won't take this number off of the computer and you will receive this call till your last day. Yes. You just kick my ass and go to hell because you are wasting my time. Okay. I'm getting paid for this. Sure. I'm getting paid good money for this. Mm-hmm. Oh, geez, hang on. There's a B on me. Hang on. There's a B on my arm. Okay. You know what? Are you playing? You keep You're talking. With I'm me. not going to talk, though. But go ahead and keep talking. Say that part again. Uh, and I'm just going to stay quiet because of this B. You know, I think you're playing with me, Mr. Card. Are you having fun with yeah. me this morning? Yeah? It's good. I like fun. Laughter is a good thing. But okay. let me ask you this. Are you a homeowner? So these telemarketers are programmed, right? Are you, you know, can't get her off her program, right? They're programmed uh, as rigidly as my robots are, right? So now we have a pirate sailing the open waters of the telecom network, uh, protecting the consumer against telemarketers, right? And, um, and here we are protecting... Oh, geez, hang on, there's a B on you. Okay. Okay. You know anyone hockey? I just woke up. Well, how's your weather, by the way? Okay, go on, go on. Sorry, sorry, can you just start over again? So, can you start over? What were you saying during the B? So, the Jolly Roger Telephone Company is out there, and when, when telemarketers encounter these robots, first of all, they don't know when they'll encounter them. And when they encounter a robot, it's in their best interest to stop calling you now, right? And so, these are protecting, um, protecting you and the consumer from telemarketing, and it's my pleasure to provide this service. So thank you very much.